There is a multi-billion dollar industry. You want to know how I did? You're hoping watching self-help videos will flip a magic switch. You really don't want to change. Not reaching our full potential. That is the scariest thought of all. And yet here you are in this video admitting that it might be a possibility. Even worse, you may have an inkling that despite all your efforts, you may be missing something and thus never being able to reach your full potential. But how is that even possible? There is a multi-billion dollar industry, self-help, motivation, everything with the promise of enlightenment. Another hack that brings you one step closer to your dreams. It's the only reason why you're not giving up. But what if I told you that the real reason why you can never reach your potential is you. You just had the largest portion of ice cream that you can think about and now you feel sick. You skipped work on your side project yesterday night. You went out for drinks instead and this morning you wake up wishing you could reverse time just to make a better, a wiser decision. Or you are heartbroken after a breakup. Breakup of a relationship that deep down you knew you shouldn't have been in in the first place. And here's how most of us react to it. We identify the pattern that went wrong. Then we go online, we search YouTube on what to do better. We find another tip, another hack, and that gives us a motivational boost. A month goes by and we find ourselves in a new slum. Maybe it's a different problem, maybe it's the same problem. And then we also notice those creators that tell us that self-help is ruining your life. Maybe that is something we need to consider. Self-help isn't evil. It works, especially when you want to achieve a change. If you look for this courageous career, one that aligns your life with what you're truly passionate about, then by all means continue watching content on YouTube, also here on this channel. It does work where we want to change. Except that's where also the problem lies, because you really don't want to change. Sure, all these little tips and tricks and hacks, they do make our life a little bit easier. But deep down, you are scared. Scared to put a real effort into that change, because if you do, you know there is a real chance that you might fail. And if you fail, then all those dreams that you have, they are shattered. And you couldn't possibly recover from that. There was this geography teacher. I hated. I despised the way how he was teaching the class. I was despising the way how he was grading things. And so I decided to make a statement by minimally engaging with his class. I liked the topics. I'm not sure whether I was good or bad at it, but it didn't matter. I scraped through with mediocre grades and it wasn't a problem because I knew that I wasn't living up to my potential because I was making a statement. And I don't know what changed one day, but before the final exam, which was actually a verbal exam in front of the school board, I decided I want to show this guy who is boss. And so I started to study day by day for weeks. I devised a plan how to best structure my presentation. And then came the day when I held my presentation. You want to know how I did, right? But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is this. After my presentation, after I've received my grade, I noticed, I realized that I never made a statement in the first place. That teacher was just continuing to teach how he was used to do that. But it did make a massive difference to how I felt about myself. I stared failure in the face and it didn't stare me down. And whether I succeeded or failed, I won because I was living up to my potential. 
we get a perverse level of satisfaction out of self-sabotage. It helps us navigate life and confirms our identity. We stay in a bad relationship because that confirms we are not lovable. We don't deserve a better relationship because we've already made so many mistakes ourselves. We stay in a career that does not play towards our strengths and we become social media martyrs. Putting our story out on social media, creating the attention we seek and confirming it's not our fault we are the victims here. On an objective level, we know this is counterproductive, but why are we still doing it? What is there to love about it? When you are a kid, you had lots of potential. You are nothing but potential. Jordan Peterson describes that as the Peter Pan story. Peter being the kid who doesn't want to grow up because then he can always be seen as this bright young kid with potential. This can be us. Once we go through this gate of doing something, anything, that infinite amount of possibilities gets smaller, much smaller. Well, most of us go on to do something, luckily, and then we are faced with the same problem. We achieve a level of success that even others are impressed with. Now, rather than living up to our potential, we are consumed living up to that expectation. Those sweet words, you are an employee with potential. Our managers don't even realize how toxic those words can be because now we know we have potential, but pursuing that potential means facing failure again, having to get out of our comfort zone, facing a whole new range of problems and new insecurities. And the worst of all, we could try and still fail. The true path to reaching our full potential lies within ourselves. First of all, by understanding what the benefits, the payoffs are of our self-sabotaging behavior. No need for responsibility, no need for commitment, and we have an excuse when we fail. Here's also something that everybody of us can relate to. If we become something else, anything else, even if it's better, we have to admit that we wasted a fair chunk of our life, of our time. And the way we were feeling before, we didn't really have to feel that way. And that realization is painful. No one of us wants to admit that we wasted time. And starting fresh at 25, 35, 45 isn't a picnic in the park either. It is hard. It doesn't feel good. It feels beneath you to start all over again. But you know that you actually have to do it. You're hoping that watching self-help videos will flip a magic switch that relieves you of that responsibility. But that magic switch isn't magic at all. It's rather simple, even though it's not easy. Make a commitment. Accept your past. You waste the time. We all have. Do you really want to waste tomorrow? Take responsibility. Whenever there is an explanation of why you don't succeed that isn't within your control, look for another one. Seek one that leads back to you. Not suggesting that there are no external forces or that luck doesn't play a role in our lives. It does. But there's nothing you can do about it. So you might as well look for an explanation that you can do something about. Also, allow time. When you were young and ambitious, you already knew that you had to bring some sacrifices. Your friends went out partying while you worked. And 10 years down the line, some of them are still in their old jobs, just less satisfied while you have achieved something. But now we feel that we deserve success quicker. We've already done something. But that's not the case. You still need that time of work and dedication. But you will also notice that the reward, the payoff, is still the same. You will end up in 10 years time in a place where you feel fulfilled, where you know you have achieved something, where you know that you lived up to your potential. And that is what courageous careers are all about. And time, something that I would like to take as well, especially now that we are all so impatient. And I would love to still be with you on your journey in two, three, four, five years time. I enjoy the likes that you sent me for sometimes a small thought or a fresh perspective. So keep them coming, it's really encouraging. 
I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.